Good morning and welcome to the teacher's wake up call or I might just rename this uh, Tuesday hot take with Madame La Prof. How's it going? Um, obviously uh, I'm gonna have to do an obligatory commentary on the World Cup because you know it's trending a bit. Um, I don't want to make any um, declarations about who's going to win or who I think uh, is going to win, who should win. Well, of course, Canada should win. <laughs> uh, that's just me because, you know, uh, I'm Canadian. Uh, so obviously, I'm going to be cheering for Canada, but I don't follow world soccer enough, enough to, um, to make an appropriate prediction. So, you know, based on my understanding and my knowledge, um, there's a part of me that wishes England would win. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. Maybe once upon a time, uh, England was quite the, the, the powerhouse when it, when it came to international football. But is it the case this year? I don't know. I don't know. We have seen that there are many strong international teams and I don't know if England cuts it anymore. Je sais pas. Je sais pas. Um, but like I said, I don't know enough about world football to, to make an appropriate declaration, but I'm going to be cheering for Canada. I'm going to be, they, they have surprised many a people. So I am cheering for Canada. Will they get past the first round? Emotionally, emotionally, I say yes. They're gonna make it past the first round. Canada is gonna make it past uh, the first round and, and it's going to blow everyone's socks off. It's going to be amazing. Rationally speaking, no, no. Logically, no. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense for them to go past the first round. So we are going to enjoy their time there. We are going to cheer on, we're going to applaud, but if they make it past the first round, emotionally, I'll be satisfied, I'll be happy. Uh, logically, I'll be stunned, All right? So that's uh, my World Cup hot take for the day, but I have another hot take. I have an educational hot take. I'm going to try and keep it short because y'all know me, I can, I can ramble on for a bit. Um, my hot take on this lovely Tuesday morning is that, unfortunately, uh, we're still not doing enough about mental health. We're still not doing enough about mental health. We, we offer the services, great, uh, when they're available, you know, uh, when they're available, but um, we are still creating situations, we're still creating situations that um, cause mental health distress and mental health issues. Uh, you cannot, you cannot expect a student to deal with mental health issues when they are faced with um, five major assignments and or tests in one week on a regular basis, like you, you can't, you can't expect them to be stable, uh, anxiety free. You can't, you can't expect that. Um, and you, you cannot, we cannot expect them to um, have a good mental health once we are still putting so much emphasis on grades. We're still equating success with grades uh, and averages and percentages. That is a major issue because you can offer all the services that you want, but if a person is faced constantly with a wall, with a mountain to climb, sure, you're going to say, well, you know, they'll get used to it, but that's, that's the point. They shouldn't be, we shouldn't be getting used to it. We shouldn't be saying, well, you know, it's normal. No, it's not. It's not normal. It's not normal to push students to the breaking point. And, and before you say, well, that's how you build resilience, no, no. Um, there's a question of, of the w being willing to be pushed. Okay, that's, that's something major. Um, 
and, and in some cases, um, they are not willing to be pushed. They, they've been placed in a situation where, for a variety of personal, familial, uh, psychological, philosophical reasons, they're, they're in a position where they have to perform, they have to excel, and, and not performing and not excelling is not an option. So they have zero say in the matter. So really, how do we expect them to, to be healthy mentally when they always see a mountain to climb and a hill? That is not what, what should be done if we want students to be, to be healthy. So dealing with mental health issues has nothing to do with the services that we offer. It's a part, but it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with how we create the situations, the environment um, that would bring a bring, I need more coffee, that would bring about a st stressful or an anxiety inducing situation. So yeah, that's my hot take. We're not doing enough about mental health, not because we're not offering services, but we're creating the situations that are stressful for students. Um, I'm always super mindful personally, as a teacher, as an educator, I'm always super mindful of that when students ask for extra time, when students um, ask for an extension. Uh, I'm, I always try to be mindful of that and engage, okay, are they asking for the extra time because they're loafing around or they legitimately need it because in math, in science, in English, in all their other subjects, they are drowning. So if I can be um, that oasis, so to speak, if we're gonna use like um, an analogy of either drowning or being lost in a storm, if I can be that oasis for them and they can, they can breathe in my class, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm doing a good job. Um, so yeah, so that is my hot take for the day. And go Canada, go Canada. That's, that's what I'm doing. Go Canada, they're playing tomorrow, so I can't wait. Um, you better believe I'm gonna have some kind of, of on my screen, we're, we're gonna watch the game. We're gonna watch somehow the game. Some student, I, I'm gonna say, log in your credentials, make it happen, we're watching the game. So on that lovely note, folks, have yourselves a lovely day.